possible break in at 29, that's 29 Malham Street, was a false alarm. There's just a new tenant getting in the property. I spoke to the keyholder and everything's in order. Hold up. things here, you know. How are people supposed to get past? Yeah, she was smashing windows, so we brought her in for criminal damage. Right. Name? Adela Thompson, Mrs. It's still Mrs. No one can change that. You know, even if I was single, I could still be called Mrs. There's no law against it. Middle names? Don't have any. Address? 24 Westerway Avenue. And I'm not going to stay there long. The landlord says I can't use the kitchen after half past seven at night. And what use is that? Occupation. I mean, I'm a human being. I shouldn't have to be treated like that. Mrs. Thompson, what do you do for a living? Waitress. When I'm working. Only there's not that much work about. Date of birth? 10th of August, 61. Place of birth? London. I suppose you think I smashed up that house because I wanted to see my kids. Do you know a solicitor? No. Well, I did in a way. Would you like to speak to the duty solicitor? No, thanks. There's so much rubbish around. Where are you if you can't get down the stairs for rubbish? OK, you have the right to speak to an independent solicitor free of charge. To have somebody informed of your arrest to consult the codes of practice. People leave stuff everywhere. Boxes and that. You can exercise your rights now at any time during your stay in custody. Sign there, please. But I see my kids anyway. Can I have your handbag, please? No matter what anyone says. And your scarf. Should they? Set keys. Should they? I get the tissues. asking for it. You see, I watch my kids from a distance. My husband. Mrs. Doesn't Thompson, know that no do you want does, us to call anyone? They can't see me, of course. Mrs. Thompson, would you just answer the questions, please? You mean I can't have a conversation? Just answer the questions that are put to you. Nothing else. Only I don't like silence. You see. And a comb. It scares me. Right. This way, please. Bloody hell. Where'd you find her? We picked her up causing havoc in Larko Avenue. She hasn't stopped talking since. So how long am I going to be here? Well, that depends. I can't stay here. I've got to find somewhere to live and there's all my things to pack. Mrs Thompson, you've been arrested for causing criminal damage. I know. So there's a lot to be done. Oh. You've got to be interviewed and if you're charged, there's photographs and fingerprints. Yeah, but... In you go. Crying. Do you know that? Who was? Graham Ballard. Brother of Keith Ballard. Only Keith's more famous. He plays in the Premier Division. Anyway, the crowd was taking the piss out of Graham and he just couldn't handle it. Do you know what he did? Go on. He walked off the pitch, didn't he? No substitutes. Warming up. Nothing. He just walked off. And they were down to ten men. What, you saw the match? No. I must have read about it somewhere. Anyway. You like football? Me? No. Mrs Thompson, why do you talk so much? I have to. I have to talk. If I don't, I hear them. Hear who? The people talking in my head. She was absolutely non-stop. Worse than Reg. George, when she's interviewed, I want an appropriate adult present. Why, Sarge? Because I'm not happy. Cheers. George, what's going on? Boyden's getting the FME to take a look at Mrs. Thompson. Oh, great. Why? He also wants an appropriate adult present when she's interviewed. It's because some daft bitch is suffering from verbal diarrhoea. We're going down the wrong road these days, you know. We're going to end up being too scared to put anyone in a cell. Well, she could be having a song, but I want to make sure. I need to know she's fit to be interviewed. Does she have a form? No, no previous convictions. Did she say why she caused the damage? Well, she wanted to see her kids. She's legally separated from her husband, but he's got custody. How many kids? Two. OK, Matthew, keep me informed. She wants a cup of tea. Right, Sarge. Is there a problem? No, no problem. Just drawing attention to herself. Says she's got people talking in her head now. In her head? Surprised they managed to get a word in. Right, what have we got? Here's some tea for you. Oh, thanks. Anyway, what I was saying about watching our kids from a distance, it doesn't really matter because they're still my kids. They'll always be my kids. So let him do all the hard work if that's what he wants. 
What, your husband? Yeah, but I wish he'd move, get the kids away from Charity Lane. Is that where you used to live? Yeah. Pretty rough area. I know. But I suppose I could always wait, see my kids when they're grown up. We could be mates, no one can stop that. Well, maybe not Mark, he'd be like his father. But Debbie's different, she's going to be like me, a free spirit. I can see it in her even now. I wonder if she saw me this morning when they put me in that police car. I hope not. Anyway, these two fellas, they dragged me into their van, didn't they? But no one arrests them. Just a minute, what two fellas? Do you know, I went to Lincolnshire once. I saw this job advertised for a waitress, silver service. Well, I've done silver service in the past, so I went there, didn't I? Is that where you met the two men you were talking about? What? No. And you know, the people up in Lincolnshire, they were kind to me. And one Sunday on my day off, I caught a bus and it went all along the coast road. Oh, I've been told my wife's here. She was brought in about an hour ago. Uh, when you say brought in? Apparently she's been arrested. Oh. And uh, your name? Colin Thompson. I'll just check. Uh, only I can't guarantee you'll be able to see her just yet. Hang on a minute. I don't want to see her. The last thing I want to do is see her. I just want to make sure she's here. Life's a bitch. Do you know that, Doctor? No, I didn't know that. Life's a bitch and then you die. That's fine. And then we all come back as little bits of energy. When did you last seek medical advice? I don't know. Well, when did you last feel unwell? I can't remember. And do you feel well at this moment? I never felt better. That's why I should be out of here, Doctor. I've got things to do. I've got to find somewhere to live. What about the people talking, Adela? What people talking? Well, you told Sergeant Boyden there were people talking inside your head. Did I? So why don't you tell the Doctor about them? Yeah, but that's not being ill, is it? Anyway, they come and go. There's nothing I can do about them. And have you discussed this with anyone else? Like who? Like your GP? No. And is it happening now, that this talking in your head? Of course it is. Only I don't listen, do I? It's only when I'm on my own sometimes I have to listen. And when these people talk, what do they tell you to do? Oh, they don't tell me anything. They talk to each other all the time, aren't they? I just have to listen. Mr. Thompson? Yeah. I'm PC Garfield. Could I have a word, please? Through here. Would you like to take a seat? <sighs> Your wife's been detained here. We're separated. Right. Uh, I've been told that you don't want to talk to her. That's right. I just want to make sure she's locked up and that she's no longer a threat to me and my kids. And that's the only reason that you're here? Yep. So you're not prepared to offer her any kind of help, only... Well, they are her kids as well. Not anymore. Do you know the childminders packed it in? It was that business this morning that did it. Now I've had to take the day off work to look for another one. Where are the children now? They're staying with some friends. Right, well, the situation is that once all the necessary procedures have taken place, Mrs Thompson may be charged with causing criminal damage. Then what? Lock her up? Well, it depends. Well, just you make sure she doesn't talk her way out of anything, because she's good at that. I don't just mean telling lies. You see... Adela doesn't have to tell lies. Everything goes round and round in her head. I know, I've lived with it. And you can't believe a word of it. Is she having a song? There's always a possibility. Has she caused any trouble since she's been in custody? No. Uh, and there's the imaginary talking she says she hears. I can't work that one out. I mean, most schizophrenics experience auditory hallucinations. That's usually one's own thoughts spoken aloud. Or they hear voices criticising them. I know the feeling. But she says she hears conversations going on. Sarge, can we interview her now? The social worker's here. What about all my things? Because I don't trust that landlord. There's all my clothes and my tapes and all my aromatherapy oils. I still care about him, you know. Your husband? Yeah, I know I gave him the run around, but that's the way I am. He should have known that. He should have made allowances for it. Adela. I'd like to ask you a bit more about the two men in the van. Oh, not that again. Was it something you heard? Yeah. So it wasn't something that happened to you? No. Well, where did you hear it then? I don't know. In your head again, I suppose. That's right, in my head. That's just an easy way out for you, isn't it, Adela? I'm beginning to realise that. Look, don't have a go at me. Well, what did the two men say? They threatened me, didn't they? How did they threaten you? They said they was going to take me to... Coats common, or that's what it sounded like. And I was frightened. Really frightened. I thought they was going to kill me. 
Sarge, Mrs. Thompson, she just said something odd. That's a surprise. No, one of these conversations she rang she's been hearing could connect with a couple of serious crimes. Really? What crimes? Two separate incidents where women were abducted, taken to Coates Common, then assaulted. I assisted Sergeant Greg with the investigation. So? If we're to believe Mrs. Thompson, the men responsible are busy talking about it. What? Yes, Sarge, in her head. This, um, this woman, what's her name? Adela Thompson. Did she come here to volunteer this information? No, she's been arrested for causing criminal damage, but she's been talking about being dragged into a van by two men. When was this? A while ago, apparently. She said they wanted to take her to Coates Common. Then why hasn't she reported this before? I don't know, Sarge. And you're telling me that what she has to say is all in her mind, there's no evidence, no proof, it's just... All in the mind? As far as I can tell, yeah. The problem is, she seems to make a lot of things up. It's difficult to tell when she's telling the truth and when she isn't. Wonderful. Narika seems to think that Mrs. Thompson may have some, uh, well, some unorthodox information. How do you mean, unorthodox? I wouldn't ask if I were you, sir. Mrs. Thompson? I'm Detective Sergeant Gregg. Do you mind if we have a chat? No. You already know Miss Davis, who was present at your interview? Yeah. You understand that she's here to protect your interests? Yeah. This conversation won't be taped on this occasion. We're interviewing Mrs. Thompson as a witness. I see. Thank you. I'm told you work as a waitress. Well, I do, yeah, when there's work about, but just lately there's been nothing. Have you ever worked at filling stations? Doing what? As a cashier. No. Have you ever worked at any counter where cash is exchanged? No, why? How well do you know Coates Common? I don't know it. What, are you saying you've never been there before? Well, of course I am. How could I have been there if I don't know it? But you have heard of the place? Well, of course I've heard of it. Everyone's heard of it. Why don't you tell us about the men you heard talking? Yeah, but that didn't really happen, did it? It's just in my mind. And it hasn't just started recently, you know, so there's no point in you bringing a doctor here because I can remember hearing people talking when I was a kid. And once, when I went on holiday with my mum and dad... Yeah. The two men who were pictured in your mind? Well, I don't picture them. They're not pictures. I just hear them. So you couldn't describe them, then? Well, of course not. What about a name? A name? Yes. Uh, have you ever heard a name mentioned when the two have been talking to each other? No. What about accents? Do they have local accents? Yeah, local accents. Mrs Thompson, please don't waste our time. I'm not wasting your time. We're looking for two men. They are vicious and very dangerous. They've robbed two filling stations. On both occasions, the female cashiers were abducted and raped. One of the women was left for dead. On Coates Common? Yes. Do you read the newspapers, Mrs Thompson? Not much, no. As well as working as a waitress, perhaps you've worked as a barmaid. They hear things, don't they? Do they? And you could say that Charity Lane is a bit of a village. I've never been a barmaid. I wouldn't want the job. Once, when I went up north for a weekend, some man asked me if I'd like to learn to be a croupier. He said I'd be good at club work. Is that when you went to Lincolnshire? No, I never went to Lincolnshire. I was making that up. Anyway, this man, this club owner... Look, the reason why I ask if you read the papers or if you've ever worked as a barmaid is that the cases I've mentioned were public knowledge. The brutality of the crimes more or less guaranteed publicity. Well, I suspect they did. So, what else are you making up? Me? Nothing. Perhaps we should give her a chance to answer. All right, then. If you don't see pictures, but only hear words in your mind... I do. How did you know the two men were driving a van? Well, never said nothing about a van. You did. You told me that was one of the first things you said. Thank you, Mrs Thompson. So what's going on, Sarge? I wish I knew. You're not going to pay any attention to anything she says, are you, Sarge? I mean, George says even her old man told him not to believe anything. Thought you paid him a visit, did you? No, he's here. Doing what? Nothing. He's waiting to see what we're going to do with her. He doesn't want to see her. He just wants to make sure she's out of the way. Well, can you blame him? What's wrong, George? Oh, I don't know, Sarge. Just something about the bloke that I'm not sure of.
Mr. Colin Thompson? Yeah. I'm DS Greg. This is WPC Data. Do you mind if we have a word? No. This way, please. Take a seat. I understand you're here because of your wife, Adela Thompson. Yeah, only she's not my wife anymore. I got rid of her about three months ago. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question, Mr. Thompson? What? Why did you and Adela split up? What's that got to do with anything? It might help us understand things. Understand your ex-wife. All right, then. I couldn't keep up with her. She wanted to talk all the time about anything. And I've got better things to do than sit around the house talking. You're saying you split up just because she talks? Yeah. And for no other reason? What else? She liked to play around. She did it too many times. With whom? Various men. It was like a sort of game with her. She couldn't have a conversation at home. She went out to find one. When you're married, you don't want to talk all the time, do you? So she'd go out and find someone who had the time and patience to listen to her. I couldn't. I suppose she only knew one way of making them listen. And where did she find these men? I don't know, pubs, clubs, places like that. So, I got a solicitor, I went to court, got custody of the kids, I even took the kids with me so people could see how it was. She didn't even bother to turn up. And do the kids miss her? Don't they ask about her? Yeah. The only thing they miss is when she used to tell them stories. She was good at that. I believe you live in the Charity Lane area. Yeah, I do. What do you do for a living? I run a garage, repairs my own business, except the bank owns two thirds of it. We're interested in a couple of men who we believe may also live in that area. They drive a white transit van. Just under four months ago, they committed two very serious crimes against women. Obviously, we're interested in finding these men. Of course, it's possible that they may already have got rid of the van. They may even have left the Charity Lane area. Would you by any chance know these men, Mr. Thompson? I don't think so, no. So why are you here? Me? I've told you what I'm doing here. That bitch has caused me a lot of trouble, and I want to make sure she's locked up. And if she's not, if she gets away with a caution? That's not a problem. I've got some money with me. 400 quid. She can have that if she promises to leave the area, to get well away from the place. We think she still has something to tell us, Mr. Thompson. Yeah? Well, I'll tell you something, shall I? Where I live, what you see, you don't talk about, and what you hear, you forget, and it doesn't pay to step out of line. Why? Who stepped out of line? Your ex-wife, just by throwing a brick? Just by drawing attention to herself? She's always trying to draw attention to herself. Yes, but this time she's doing it with us. And I'm sure that that wouldn't go down too well with certain people in Charity Lane, would it? They might think that for once in her life, she's got something worthwhile to say. We've just had a chat with your ex-husband, Adela. Colin? Is he here? Yes. So what's he doing here? Well, uh, at first we thought he'd come here because he was frightened. Frightened of what? Of two criminals and what they might do to him and the children if they couldn't find you. Me? Why would anyone be looking for me? Because of what happened to you one night when you were dragged into a van by two men. Oh. And then we thought perhaps we were wrong. Uh, and that's not Colin's real reason for coming here. So what is the real reason? Maybe he still cares for you. Maybe he's come here to help, to offer you his support. Have you asked him that? We will. Maybe you could offer him your support in return. How? By telling us what really happened. It's just us talking, Adela, no one else. But you've got to tell us the truth this time. No lies, no making it up. Just the truth. I was... Uh, I was in a car park at one of them motel things on the motorway. It was late at night. What were you doing there? I was seeing this man. Married man. When was this? About five months ago. You see, I really do hear things in my head. It's just that when I'm scared, the things in my head and the truth get, well, get sort of mixed up. Just tell us. We spent the evening at the motel. Then my friend, this married man, he walked me to his car. 
it was going to drive me home. Then this, then this van drove into the car park very fast and these two fellas jumped out. My friend, he got scared. I suppose he thought he was going to be robbed. Then there was his wife and all that to worry about. He jumped into his car and drove off. Just left me there. What colour was the van? White. Then what happened? They, uh... They walked towards me. They was grinning and eyeing me up. Why do men have to do that? Why do they always have to try it on? I mean, you get kids no more than 16 eyeing you up these days. And even the other day when I was shopping yeah, at the Farragut Hay... Just tell us what happened at the motel. Well, I tried to run back to the reception desk, didn't I? But one of them grabbed me. They... Uh, they shoved me inside the van and drove off with me. They said they was take me for a drive, for a bit of fun, up to Coates Common. I was so scared. I kept talking to them over and over again, asking them not to hurt me. I must have talked non-stop. Did you know these men? I... Yeah, I'd seen them before. Where? In Charity Lane. Colin did some work for them once, and one of them remembered me. When we was driving, he said something like, Hey, this is... Colin Thompson's missus. Then they just stopped the van, opened the door and chucked me out. I had to walk home. I had to walk all that way. Do you know what? When I got home, Colin was sitting watching television, but he didn't want to do nothing about it. I told him what had happened and he switched the TV off and listened to me for once, but he said, leave it, forget it. I'll never forget that. I suppose I was lucky, wasn't I? What was all that? Mr. Thompson, could we have another word, please? The two men we're looking for. I believe you did some repair work for them once. Adela told you that. Yep. Stupid cow, they'll come looking for her now. Yeah? So you've been wasting your time, haven't you? Hanging around here all morning, hoping everything was going to pass you by. Because it hasn't, has it? You see, it doesn't work that way. As far as those two fellas are concerned, she's still Colin's missus. And if they can't find her, they're probably going to come looking for you, right? So what do I do? Well, for a start, you don't have to pay your wife 400 quid to keep her safe. Hang on to it, buy the kids something. All you have to do is give us a couple of names. What's happening? Well, they're both prepared to make a statement, Sarge. Well, that's togetherness for you, isn't it? You know what I think sometimes? In my head? What? Well, the real reason why those men let me go. You said it was because they knew your husband? Yeah, but I think there was another reason. On the way to Coates Common, I think I got on their nerves. I think I was talking too much. <laughs>